the um, PTA president for Urban Institute of Mathematics, but I consider myself a parent advocate for the Bronx. Um, and I often try to get, um, you know, our voices out there so that we can be at the table. Um, it's a very important thing to be at the table, not to be underscored. Um, each one of us has an opportunity to be there. Um, even if you're not at the table, you can make sure that you get someone that can be there at the table uh, because we wanna make changes. And a lot of us have seen that this whole remote learning has not been working. And we've seen, um, you know, the devices have not gotten to um, all the students that are needed. And we've seen many other issues. Um, and quite honestly, they, there was knowledge that uh, remote learning was going to be a reality, even from the summer. And so the fact that now we are almost, it's gonna be a year, right, <laughs> into this, and now we are still dealing with some of those same issues as if it was back in May uh, is unacceptable. And so that's why we have to come together and see how it is that we can reimagine the public schools and that only happens with us working together. And what's gonna be great about today's session that I really wanna emphasize is that we are going to be documenting all of the concerns, the ideas and that you bring to the table. And we are gonna make sure that it gets to the ears of those who need to hear it. Why? Because a lot of times when you have the town halls, let's be real, it's usually, they, it's usually 50 minutes of you know, whoever speaking, that's in charge. And then the last 10 minutes, five minutes, then all of a sudden is to hear parent voices. And yet decisions are being made every day. And so that's why today there will be less of us and more of you because we're just here to elevate at your, your concerns and your ideas, but we're here to listen. So that we can make sure that we bring them forward. So uh, without further ado, Shaniqua. You're muted, Shaniqua. Sorry about that, still getting used to this. Um, thanks, Angela, that was a wonderful introduction. So again, I'm Shaniqua Moore and um, I am just so excited for you all. I'm excited to be here. We have a lot of things that we need to address um, with our Department of Education. Um, I'm a licensed social worker. I also am a nonprofit CEO, I run a nonprofit by the name of I Raise Girls and Boys International. Um, and in my experience in working with the Department of Education and work with many principals, I have seen um, the inequities in our public school system and it's not acceptable. Um, as someone that has grown up in public school education, and now that's a parent, I am realizing, you know, how we really need, we really need to get it together. And there's a lot that we need to do. Um, and as parents, we're often left out of these conversations. There are a lot of decisions that are made without us at the table. Um, and sometimes we, what we talked about before this, like Angela and I said, sometimes we are at the table and they're still not listening to us. And so it's super important that we are, we have a voice and that you have a voice. And that's what tonight is about. It's about your voice and amplifying that because that's what matters. We are the parents, these are our kids. We are the experts of our own kids. Um, and we have to move more in partnership with uh, the Department of Education. So we want to start off. We had a poll for you all, um, but unfortunately with the Zoom technicalities, we're having a little bit of issues with it. So I will just uh, ask the first poll question verbally. And if you all can put it in a chat box, um, either uh, yes or no, that would be great. The first question for all of us tonight, whether you're a parent or an educator, is um, are you satisfied with your child's remote learning? And you can answer in the chat box, are you satisfied with your child's remote learning? I see some answers coming in. Are you, are you, are you, are you in there? Are you saying in there? Um, you can just put it in the chat box so you don't have to verbally say it. When it's time to talk, we'll, we'll make sure you're, you, we tell you to unmute your mics. So for now, you can just put it in a chat box. The, the question is, are you satisfied with your child's remote learning? And if you are not a parent, 
um, or and you're an educator, you can answer from the standpoint of, of an educator. Are you satisfied with your students remote learning? So um, so far looking in the chat box, I see two answers coming in. Three, I see a lot of no's. I see a yes um, from someone. That is really great. Um, the rest of you are not responding yet. Oh, and if some of you are on your phone, I do recognize that. Um, so that's okay if you're on your phone and you can't answer. But for those of you that are using um, not a parent, new tutor uh, with iRaise. Oh, hi, Margaret. That's great. Um, well, if you're a tutor or an educator, you can also answer from that standpoint uh, whether or not you've, you're satisfied based on what you've been seeing. All right, so we'll get, we're gonna give you um, not a parent, I'm a librarian. Hi, Nicole, it's great to have you here. We'll give you about 30 more seconds to answer that question. Are you satisfied with your child remote learning? And if you're not a parent, you can answer from the role that you play, whether that is um, a tutor or an educator um, or a librarian, whatever that role is. All right, and we are going to, great. All right, so, so far um, we got a lot of no's coming in. Uh, we did get one yes uh, e, uh, from those even that were not um, necessarily parents. I did see another no um, from someone that's also a tutor that's stating that they're not satisfied with remote learning. Um, and what your answers are this evening, it really represents what we're seeing as a whole, especially um, in New York City um, and in the Bronx, right, where schools are, are often neglected. So this is not just your, um, what you're feeling, but there are so many other parents that are feeling those same things and why we're here today. So that being said, we're going to open up our first discussion question before that. Angela, I'm going to give it to you to see if you want to uh, jump in or chime in at all. Sure. Um, I think I just want to chime in and saying that I think there's a lot of reasons why um, each one of us feels this way, right? That it's not working. Um, you know, although many of many who said no, it's just, you know, a two letter <laughs> word. Um, there's so much that's so much deeper in that, the reasons why it's a no. Um, and I think part of that speaks to the, the lack of preparation for this. Um, as I mentioned before, this was something that was known from before that we were going to be um, going remote, at least partially, right? Because even the blended model included a certain portion of remote. And so um, that's the reason why it's just so important having a robust, um, really well thought out remote learning system, something that's very interactive. Um, so I'm just curious to hear, which I know we're gonna go into in a little bit, what people are gonna say is why it's not working because I think there's a lot of, of whys and those are the things that we really need to bring forward, so. Thank you, Angela, and that was really great. I just want to give a shout out really quickly to um, my executive director and, and program director, Letitia Stewart and Catherine Campbell that just joined us this evening, just saying hello. Um, uh, thank you all for, for, thank you both for joining and supporting, and I'm sure you'll have a great time facilitating um, some conversations this evening. So um, just to piggyback, Angela, absolutely. We have known for such a long time that we were going, going to be remote. We've been remote since, you know, for, for many months now. And it definitely speaks to the Department of Education's um, lack of preparation on remote learning. Um, it's a disservice to us parents, right, that have to sit with our kids and have to work. There are a lot of unrealistic expectations here. And we do want to hear those whys come up. We're really excited to hear what, what you have to say. So, um, yep, absolutely, Jawan, just acknowledging your comment not enough time for school, lack of time for class and too much parent interaction. Yeah, um, and we will share some, um, definitely some more intimate stories. Michelle, I see your hand raised. Um, 
I do want to give you an opportunity to say something before we go into our open discussion. So Michelle, you have the floor. Hi. Hello, everybody. I, I thought we thought you were going to ask the why. So I just want to keep my hands up for the why, like my, why I think that it's not working. You know, um, you have the floor. So if you wanted oh. to share now, sure. Um, sure. So part of my feeling of the why not working is because they didn't prepare parents for remote learning. So they kind of just, I mean, you know, I consider myself a very dedicated parent. I'm involved in a lot of stuff. I've always been involved in school and I've suggested that they prepare parents because parents are gonna be doing most of that support at home. I don't care how robust their forthcoming plans are, but you know, it's always forthcoming and it's always robust and they are expecting parents. So I have three kids I'm doing remote learning with at home, one who is special needs and one who suffers from bad anxiety, which tripled over the COVID pandemic. Okay. So in addition to that, I don't, I can't do the work of five teachers per kid in that little bit of time span. So, you know, my daughter's in a special school. Her teachers are expecting me to sit there with her all day. If I sit there with her all day, I can't possibly help my other daughter with a math quiz or her math problems that she's not really retaining and, and understanding the concepts. And then my other kid just is so depressed and frustrated that she doesn't see the point in any of it because why are we bothering with school? And her school is wonderful, but she's not feeling like she's in school. So, you know, I mean, it's just not, it's just not working, you know? And then you have parent burnout, like I'm exhausted, <laughs> you know? And I, 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 you know, I'm up every day, I'm doing the same thing and I feel so defeated. You know, I just feel defeated. And if I give up, then what? You know, they're like setting parents up for failure. And I've said it to the superintendent. We had meetings, town halls, and I told them, you are setting parents up for failure. And they said, oh, no, don't worry. It'll be great. I said, okay. And now here I am feeling defeated and proving my point that, you know, I feel like a failure, like, uh, I, you know. And I don't really know how to help my kids. Yeah. You know, I, I, that first of all, I want to say, number one, Michelle, thank you for, be, for coming and just being very transparent with us and for starting that conversation, because I think it's how we all feel, right? Even as a parent, I've, I've had those feelings in the last yeah. month. Um, I also want to say you're not a failure. You're an amazing <laughs> mom. And the fact that you're here right now, and you're and you're you're telling us your struggle it shows how committed and devoted you are to your kids you also mentioned a lot of things like uh being a mom that is a child um being a parent of a child with special needs and how that is so difficult right yeah. these are things that we are not dealing with in the department of education no, that we either. have to amplify um we're, uh, there are a lot of kids that are it's not set up to help kids with special needs Right. And then as parents, like you said, we're expected to sit there and do the job of five teachers. It's impossible. There's no way we can do that. So I just mm -hmm. want to say thank you. And we're here with you. There are people in a chat box that's giving you a lot of love and support right now. Oh, thank you. I think we all feel that same way, Michelle. And I want to give it yeah. to Angela to chime in right now. Yeah, I just want to chime in and just say that in no way are you a failure. And but I will echo the fact that all of us have felt some felt that at some point uh, during this whole course. It's mm -hmm. enough to really tear you down. You have to mentally almost tell yourself like, this is gonna be okay. And as much as you give that faith to your child where you're like, you're gonna go there, you're gonna do this remote day and you know, <laughs> you're gonna get all the work done. But inside you're wondering like, how am I balanced, you know? <laughs> how do I support my kid in this? Like realistically, you can't show that face to them, but that's the reality of what it is. You, it's, it's, it's a battle. And then when you add on to it, uh, work and possibly other kids at home. And as you mentioned, you know, having maybe special needs kids or having kids that are just struggling. I mean, how many of us, I'd love to see in the chat, you know, how many of us are dealing with kids that just are not, 
um, feeling motivated. They, they've lost that motivation, that daily motivation to just want to even do it anymore. But before that, they were excited about school. They were happy to, you know, get to know their teachers. They, there was just an enthusiasm, you know, and, and then now as parents, you have to become the cheerleader as well, right? You know, we're going to have a great day. <laughs> And yes, I see Catherine, you have four special needs children and it's exhausting. You know, it is exhausting. As a parent, we are exhausted. We're exhausted and there's no ending it because besides the schoolwork, then when the schoolwork is over, then is the homework. And so <laughs> it's all at home and there's no escape, right? And especially as numbers are rising, especially in the Bronx, right? It's not like you're gonna, after work, say, all right, I'm gonna go with my friends and you know, maybe talk over coffee. You're not, because there's nowhere to go. You're just here with them all the time. There's no escaping it, you know? But, but we're survivors. I'm gonna end it with that, Michelle, and you're surviving and you're doing a great job. And, all of you that are here are doing a great job. We're committed and somehow we're gonna work to make this better because, um, you know, and, and there's ways, that's why we need to talk so that we can come up with ways to, to make it better. Absolutely, thank you so much, Angela. So we're gonna, uh, Michelle, thank you for that because it actually, it's a great interlude into our question. Our first open discussion and we want you all to participate, be very open, um, well, as, as comfortable as you, as, um, you know, whatever makes you comfortable, but we, we, we really wanna hear you. Um, that first open discussion is what are, what are, what are you struggling most with right now? Um, in terms of remote learning, as a parent, what are you struggling with most right now? And you all can chime in. Um, anyone can go first, whoever wants to start and kickstart the conversation, um, be my guest. But what are you struggling with right now um, as a parent and in terms of remote learning? I can chime into that <laughs> and share. Hello, good evening, yeah, everyone. Please. So I actually, there are actually two things that are uh, a bit of a struggle for me. So one was staying on top of assignments. Um, I actually have a teenager. He's not even a young child, but he, he was diagnosed with ADHD. And, you know, he's never been one that was super motivated to actually be in school and, you know, get um, assignments done. And you know, he really wants to go back to school in the building because just that self-awareness, he's like, I knew if I'm home and he was really upset when I decided not to send him <laughs> and to uh, do the remote learning, um, you know, just out of a fear of what was going on. But um, he was really upset because he's like, I know if I'm home, I'm not going to want to do any work. And that's pretty much the struggle that we have been having. So we go back and forth a lot about him getting assignments done. And, um, you know, and he gets upset because he's like, this is why I wanted to go to like to the building, because I knew that this is what was going to happen, um, that, you know, he he wouldn't want to do any work. And um so that's been a show and, I, and definitely I understand the feeling like a failure part because I said I, I'm working from home and so I'm I feel like I'm right here at home with this child and he's like not passing any classes <laughs> he's like missing assignments and I feel like it makes me look like a bad parent like how are you right there with this child and you can't get him to do his work or you can't stay on top of you know making sure that he's getting things done but it's difficult because I try to tell him you know set your alarm on your phone like I'm working so I have meetings I don't have time to you know kind of just sit there and watch watch you do what you and making sure that you're doing what you need to do. So I need you to set the alarm on your phone for 10 minutes before your class starts. So you can, you know, get in the start logging into your class. And then sometimes I go and I look and he's asleep and it's like, well, you're not in your class. <laughs> so that's like one struggle. And I think the other struggle was the fact that 
because he's never been that motivated. And actually last year, um, you know, since he got to high school, it's been a, a big struggle. And he started actually getting a bit more motivated last school year, kind of before things shut down. And he was actually doing his work and he was actually getting into the rhythm and the groove of actually enjoying school for like the first time in years. And then he just got like everything just kind of stopped because schools closed. And so we're kind of now back to the the not enjoying school part <laughs> and it's like wow we were kind of on a, a good streak and then the, we kind of hit the wall now so it's like getting that motivation back for you know um for learning and and actually doing something so that's kind of my struggle right now <laughs> thank you leticia for sharing that you definitely um, hit on a lot of different areas. Um, I think that, again, we all can nod our heads in agreement as you're speaking um, in terms of the, the motivation that we see our kids, uh, that level of motivation sort of declining for our children, um, especially in a home environment, right? Um, and so absolutely. I want to hear from some other people. I did see some things coming in in a chat box, um, but if you, you could unmute your mics and share it with the group, that would be great. Hello. Hi, I just want to, oh, someone is on? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, Hi, I'll go right after is... you. I'm... Thank you. Good evening, everybody. My name is Miriam Dorado. I have two kids. Elementary, they are 10 and 9 years old, fourth and fifth grade, and I am working from home, and I feel the same. Like they are left behind because I am there, but I'm not there at all. And I have to be responding to phone calls and doing my duties on the job. I have a very bad review at my last uh, meeting from my supervisor because I am trying to help them, but at the same time, I can concentrate with them and they are left behind too. I'm not motivated to do any kind of uh, Full work. The little one, fourth grade, is more motivated and is more on top of things, but the older one in fifth grade that they worry me more because he's going to middle school next year. He is like, no, I am not doing anything, he's not motivated, I have to be on top of him all the time. He forget uh, assignments. I have the teacher texting me because thanks to her and we, we get a very good uh, communication, but still I feel like, how can I do this? I was thinking even like I should quit my job because my kids are more important, but what about, you know, me and work too, and I need my work. And I am like, oh God, but how I do this? It's my uh, opinion and my adding to this meeting. And thank you for bringing all of this together because I am really struggling a lot. Have a good night and happy holidays. Thank you, Miriam. Angela, did you want to pay, piggyback off Miriam? I do, because I also am working from home. Um, and it's, it's just incredibly hard. Um, and you want, I think, you know what, when I really think about why it's so difficult. I think it's because I've always loved to do everything at my 100% and I have prided myself in being able to be that great worker and then that great volunteer and then that great mom and that great wife and, you know, great, great, great. And now it's almost like, you guys remember when we used to, um, what is that? When you're a juggler and you have the balls in the air and, you know, you have two, then you have three, you know, and then as you increase the balls, there's a point where that's it. One of them's going down or all of them are going down. You know what I mean? <laughs> and that's how I kind of feel, Miriam. I feel like that's where I'm at. I'm trying my best to do this for the long haul, right? Because I think that's another thing, right? Back in March, we kind of thought like, all right, by May, this will all be away. And by now we're at the point where we realize this, 
this is not coming to an end <laughs> anytime soon. And so now that's where the frustration comes because, you know, it, again, with the ball juggling thing, right? When you're uh, juggling it, if you think that, all right, I only have to do this for five seconds, five seconds, you say to yourself, all right, five seconds, I can do that. You know, they tell you 20 seconds. All right, 20 seconds, I can do that. But now they say, you're going to be doing this for a year, a year and a half. <laughs> Wait a minute. Like, this is way beyond our comfort level. It's way beyond what we were built for. Something's going to fall. So what I'm going to say to you, Miriam, is you know what? You will always know within yourself what's going to be best for your family. And you know what? This is for but a time. And I know that before this, you and every and each one of us here, we were doing 100% for each thing. But right now, no one can get 100% out of you or out of any one of us. We're going to just do the very best. If that means that I can only do 95%, <laughs> you know, but my family still continues, then that's what it is. You know, do it. You're doing a great job. Don't doubt yourself. Um, I think that what needs to happen is I think that society as a whole has to realize that um, prioritize us, right? And realize that we are doing the very best that we can. Yes, um, you know, maybe if you're in, I'm just making up, but let's say you're in finance. Yeah, maybe the uh, money that you're bringing in is going to be a little bit less. But, you know, what about all those years where you were bringing in? a ton, you know, like it's got to all balance out. And, and, um, and so always, and here's my, my big advice as a mom, make sure that you make some kind of time for you, because that's going to be the thing to keep you sane and to be able to put that smile on your face when they tell you that they're too tired to turn on the, the computer, but you don't want to get that phone call from the teacher who's going to question you again and make you feel like you're a bad parent. I'm just keeping it real. Like, <laughs> you know, or you don't want to get that, you don't want them to oversleep so that you get that phone call or, or somebody knocking from ACS on your door. I'm oh, yeah. saying these are realities. So <laughs> keep, oh, yeah. you know, do what you can do. <laughs> no, that was well said, Angela. I was just nodding away and just thinking about, um, I'm just uh, just hearing a lot of the same thing being echoed, that feeling defeated, feeling overwhelmed, feeling like we're at the end of our rope, um, the juggling constantly, and when does it end? Um, and then, you know, feeling like we're failing as parents. And we're absolutely not. That's why we're here today. We're not. Um, and we're, we're going to be a support to one another. Um, and we're definitely, again, we're going to take these concerns. We're writing them out. And we, we are going to be writing up something official that we'll be sending out to the DOE because we want real change out of this. Um, so thank you for sharing that, Miriam. Uh, Catherine, I think you were speaking. Um, do you, did you want to start sharing? I want to share. Yeah, something. sure. Oh, okay. All right, we'll have Catherine and then we'll have Mustafa share right after. Yes, thank you. Sure. Yes, I'm a mother of four children and my children are, I have two teenagers and a middle, a middle child and one child that's in uh, kindergarten. So um, it's hard getting them on the computer and getting them motivated. Um, you think it'll be easier because you have like older children getting on, but um, each child go on at a different time. Some go on at, uh, one go on at 7.15, the other one is on around 7.45, one is on at 9.30, the other one is on by 8. And it's like you have to constantly log the younger ones in because sometimes they forget or they're tired. And it's just that, that scheduling, me happen to having to like get them prepared for school, whether it's wash their face, get them dressed, let them look presentable by the computer, eating food. And just having them stay up. I have one child that would just fall asleep during the whole school period. He would just sleep. He's not motivated. He does not want to do his classwork. He does not want to do his homework. And no matter how many times I wake him up, 
no matter how many times I say, hey, you got to be up, you got to do your homework, here's your homework, here's your classwork, this is what you need to do and stand beside him, um, he won't do it. And then I have teachers, different teachers from each, uh, uh, from each child that constantly emailing me, the emailing back and forth is just so crazy like uh it's just like hey your child didn't do their homework today he needs to do this by this day hey your child didn't make it into to school this uh to this period this time he needs to he or she needs to make it into school this time and it's about 24 to 30 different teachers oh that gosh. is contacting me whether it's their history teacher math teacher science teacher english teacher their um speech uh their speech therapist whether it's their counselor it's or the support worker is just so many people to kind of constantly try to talk with per day or per week and as well as just working from home and having to direct the program it's just it's sometimes it's insane sometimes I get overwhelmed sometimes like my back start hurting and I'm like god what is happening around me right now and it's just getting the kids motivated trying to motivate them trying to get them to actually um, participate in class um there's times I walk into my daughter's room and she's she has her TV on, her phone in her hands and her computer. And I'm just like, what's happening? What are you doing? And, you know, and just trying to get them motivated, trying to get them um, just excited about school. They're not excited. They're not motivated. They don't see it's like it's no urgency for them. It's no sense to them. It's like, why are we doing this? this can't be real, you know? So that's just the hardest part for me right now with my children is just trying to get them motivated, trying to get them to do their work, to participate. None of them want to participate, not even the five-year-old. He won't go by the computer. He won't interact with anyone. He has special needs and he's just like, bye. He will close the screen. Um, it's insane. Yeah. Wow. That's a lot. Um, and you definitely, you know, you've shown a lot of really great points um, in regards to having kids at different age and grade levels and then them having different schedules and having to continuously come on to make sure they're on schedule, but then realizing they're actually not because they're sleeping or they're on their phone. Um, I'm listening and I'm thinking, I only have one, right? I heard, I seen Leticia put it in a chat box. Um, I have one uh, daughter and she does the same thing. Like she, she's like one kid and five, honestly. Um, but she does the same thing. She's when I'm checking her to see if she's on track, she's on Roblox playing Roblox. And I'm like, this is not a school. Um, and so is that constantly constant redirecting, which is, it becomes very overwhelming. So Catherine, we hear you. Thank you for sharing that with us. And we we're going to have some tips at the end that we'll be sharing with, with parents for remote learning. So just stick in there with us. Uh, Mustafa, you are up next. Uh, hi, this is Mustafa. I work with the Iraqi Health Board and uh, as a mental health professional and physician. So I just uh, mm, uh, struggle with my sister, nephews, niece, also my brother, because they are refugees. Still now they are not uh, become the citizen, even they have lived here for five years and more. But this is what I hear also from my clients that uh, refugees, they like, there's a lot of issues going on uh, with personal level. My nephew is that is he's sick and that. it's due to him that he started to eat his uh, finger now and feet toes and it's going to be have bleeding from it because of this you know studying from the uh, from home and when i talk about my sister do this do this is i can't she's already burned out because she's working from home sometimes she go to the to work uh, because her work is like needed to go to their like to work from the office and the client also when you talk like you want to do the cognitive restructuring, it is not just they they listen, but they don't do it because there is a death, like death rates have been in Iraqi communities. And when you tell them that to get them healthy, that do the social distance, 
they don't listen to you till we have this issue happen like four or five deaths last week and they are scared now from this and struggling with their kids they don't listen to their parents parents burn out they don't do know how to deal with these kids some parents they don't know even the english and it's so struggling with them to even sign a computer so they don't do anything they don't know what to do and this is really frustrating and upset and burn out them and they don't so i cannot work alone with them because working like alone it's burned out to me also because i'm working for home now yeah i just want to put that the issue the refugees is also different from if you are a citizen or not and if you know the english or not people suffer you even struggle now mentally the parents and the kids Thank you for listening. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. And also, I just wanted to mention, because uh, you mentioned a child biting their fingers. Yes. To a point where it started bleeding. Yeah, not yeah. just biting the fingers. It's just they, they like, like they eat the skin and it started bleeding. So I started to put the bandage on it and then put the oils, not eat the fingers. And the, even the toes, fingers. That's not just because of the stress. He cannot go to do, because he's new, like computer, everything is new to him. Science computer, he's six years old. And then to touch the computer, touch it like it's too much on him. And then they want to do that to so the math and reading. And then they teacher is not cooperating with them because I want you to 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 have the accent American accent you should say there water you know, like war not water like it's too much on him then he said I did not like the teacher I hate her he shut down this the the computer I don't want to read I don't I, I like they don't even the teachers not understand the kids even if they are refugees or not that's my point and that's a, the, a definitely a population that we need to pay attention to. But just wanted to mention, I don't know if you said it was your nephew, your niece, but definitely to have your um, them evaluated because it may sound like nervousness or maybe even anxiety, depending on, I don't really know. I don't want to diagnose, but I'm just, just yeah. some of the symptoms, just listening to it. So definitely want to encourage you to have mom or dad follow up with the doctor on that. Yeah. Um, and thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah, I'm in Seattle, by the way. What was that? I'm in Seattle. We have this. Oh, system. you're in Seattle. Yeah. yeah, no worries. Thanks for joining us from Seattle. Um, Michelle, I think your hand was up again. I wasn't quite sure if it. Yeah, no, it is. Know. Yeah. I know. I always, I, I could talk all the time and I always get ideas and I, they have to come out. So um, what I was going to say is what, when I had meetings and I was talking about this all in the beginning of April, and I had said to Dr. Tobias, I said, you know, I'm dealing with mental health issues. I said, that will come first. I said, you know, and not that I don't care about my kids' academics, okay? She could always repeat the grade. Like, that's the point I'm at right now. She's really like, you know, she'll go through states of this, this downs, like these mood swings, and it doesn't just affect her, like it affects the entire house. So when that kid is not good, my whole house is not good. So what I ended up saying to the teachers, and what I ended up saying, you know, I said, the mental health part will come first. This in this house is my classroom. If I'm feeding my kid, and I, I called out her, the middle one's teacher. I told the little one's teacher. I said, you can't tell my kid that they can't eat right now because they're watching a video on Brain Pop, okay? So if now is the time that I got to make breakfast because I've been up and I've been situating everybody else, I said, this is the time my kid is eating, you know? And you put those teachers in their place because you know what? They, what, what they have to do is they got to check all their boxes and it's not really about your kid. It's that they're getting so much pressure from the back end to check all their little boxes that the kid was in class and the kid didn't participate and the kid did this and the kid did that. They're not thinking about what's happening in that kid's house. Like my house doesn't, I don't want my kids in their bedrooms doing work because I can't run up and down and all over the place all, all morning and all afternoon. So I need them locally in the same vicinity. Is it is it ideal? Maybe not. 
but this is my house. So this is, the, we're working with what we got. And if you can't, if, if the teacher makes my daughter cry, especially my special needs daughter, I, I tell the teacher, I disconnect it. And I, I call the teacher later. I said, you're not going to make the kid cry. If you're, if you can't handle how the situation is going, then you're doing something wrong. Like, don't yell at my daughter and don't make my child feel like they're doing something wrong. Cause now that shut her down for the rest of the day. And she's not going to log back in, you know, if she doesn't want to turn her camera on for your class, because you're yelling at two other kids that are not doing what they're supposed to do. She's sensory. So that bothers her and she gets upset for that kid. And she'll lo I tell her if she's yelling, lower the volume. So now my, my disabled daughter, she will lower the volume. Or I know that something happened because she'll get up and walk away from the laptop, you know? So I empowered my kids in my house not to feel intimidated by someone who's 50 miles away or 20 miles away from them. You know, the teacher, if they have an issue, should be discussing it with the parent. A lot of the parents aren't even in the house, so they're kind of bullying the kids, you know? So... It's just not fair. So parents need to know that what they say is empowering and they can empower their own household. And you need to stick up for your damn family because th the only way is that they're gonna understand is if you stick up for your family, like my kid's struggling, you're not gonna make my kid cry in my house because they didn't understand a math problem that you were supposed to teach them. If they don't understand, it's because this remote learning is terrible and it's hard for them to understand, you know? So I actually got good reception from my teachers after I did that, you know? And now they don't, they're really careful how they're addressing and maybe they don't even know they're doing it because they're under stress. You know what I mean? So I think that just a word to the teacher, not calling them out, like embarrassing them or whatever, but just a side, a side conversation with that teacher and just say, you know, I mean, everybody's struggling here. You don't got to be mean. Tones of voices really is all we got on this platform, you know? So, I mean, that's what I did because, and it's, you know, it's still not perfect, but I mean, as crappy as it is, I don't want my kids crying on top of it, you know? So, you know. Wow. Absolutely, Michelle. I like, I'm like, I'm taking a step back to like take it all in because you just said really great things. I want to just commend you as a parent for advocating for your child. Your child should never have to go through that crying online or to the point where they're so overwhelmed that right. they're, they're crying. Like that's emotional distress. <laughs> should not have to go through that. Um, and also, Michelle, I love when, when you talked about the fact that mental health comes first because it does. It does, it has right? To. And we, it has don't, to. we don't always recognize that, um, but it has to come first. It is. Our kids' well being is number one before anything. Right. I mean, a lot of times teachers may not necessarily get that, uh, and not all teachers, but just in general, sometimes they're thinking about that checklist or that those mandates and are not necessarily seeing our kids holistically, but we know that their mental health comes first. And if mentally they're checked out, they're not going to get it academically. Like that is yeah. very basic. Um, I also liked what you said about, I took a few notes, um, what you said about you, you set them up in a centralized place that's actually advisable outside of their bedroom. Cause in the bedroom, their brains already are wired to think I'm in the bedroom. I need to sleep or yeah. um, whatever else, you know, or I need to lay down or relax. So it's always good to take them out and to put them at an actual desk because it will help them in terms of focusing. Um, so that's really good that you're doing. Um, I also like that you were teaching your kids ab ab advocacy and coping skills while remote learning. So like one of the things you said, lower the volume, that's very powerful because that gives her control too. Um, and I love that. And we're, you know, every parent has to find out what works for them. For my, for me and my, uh, with my daughter, when she gets to the point where she's just crying, I'm like, you're done. Get mm -hmm. off of that computer. Y you can do that yeah. another time. Go that's to sleep. It relax. You're fine. Like I, I will, I will write your teacher a nice email and we have to do this as parents. We can't be afraid to, 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 to stand up for our kids and be our kids advocate. Right. Um, and we need to know when enough is enough with our kids. And it's okay to say that parents, it doesn't mean you're failing. It doesn't mean that you are, um, you're, you're being defeated by doing that. Sometimes you need to do that. And we need to also 
put um, some pressure on the DOE to allow parents to have to, um, to have more leadway when it comes to these things and to be more flexible when it comes to scheduling. Because you're right, it is our home. It is our home. And if my child is hungry and she needs to step away from the computer eat, she's going to eat. If she needs to stretch, if she needs some water, I'm going to give her water regardless because my child's well-being comes before anything. And that's our job as parents. So yep. kudos to you, Michelle, for that. Absolutely love it. Uh, we're going to let some other parents or others jump in. Please jump in in the conversation here. I, I just wanted to jump in one quick second before we go on. I just want to say I also have had that situation where I've had to advocate on behalf of my daughter as well. Um, I remember <laughs> I'm laughing to myself thinking about it. Even getting a, a phone call about that my daughter was, was two minutes late to class for three days in a row and they wanted to have an explanation as to why. It's like, okay, I wanted to say, do you have any clue? Like I have three children here, <laughs> what it's taken. And two minutes is not so bad. It's not like, tell me like that she missed the whole day, that she's missed days and days on end, you know? But you're gonna talk to me about two minutes. That's that's my first thing, you know? Um, like, hey, she she showed up, she signed in and she's there. Second thing I was going to mention is the whole thing of the camera, right? Um, I don't know, parents, if you've gotten calls about this. Uh, I received calls saying that when she had her camera on, she was only showing from her nose up, and they wanted for her to show her entire face. So I said, <laughs> I said, if you're seeing her nose and her eyes, you see she's focused. What what exactly do you need to see from here down? <laughs> like, where is it in a manual that you must see the mouth as part of this virtual? Show me where it is, and you can show it to me because it doesn't exist. <laughs> so, you know, I said, you know what? She just started middle school. You know, she's in sixth grade. Uh, you know, there's that whole preteen thing already. Um, she's on the laptop, you know, the whole time, you know, if she only wants to show you from the nose up, then that's, that's what she's going to show you. You know, can you go in there and check to see if she's showing the full face? I'm working full time. No, I cannot. I cannot. I cannot do that. So I think that we need to set limitations, but I will say this, um, because I also advocate on behalf of teachers as well. I feel that they're being pressured. I feel like this is coming from above and they're being told this is what you need to do and you're going to be evaluated based upon these things. And so therefore that's why they're put into this predicament. So I don't blame them really. And it's not all of them, but I, even the few, if, if when you're really put with a lot of pressure, something's going to happen. You're going to want to pop. And so, um, and that's something that hasn't been talked about how uh, remote learning, part of the reason why maybe remote learning is not working is, as we mentioned before, the lack of preparation that had, that uh, the Board of Ed uh, put into place before this. But the second thing is the lack of preparation for their own staff. Um, you know, there really wasn't, where is it that teachers and staff go in order to talk about their own frustrations with remote learning or, you know, lack of training for themselves on how this platform is different than a classroom. You know, um, where do they get to go? I don't know that there's a place um, for them to be able to um, let these frustrations out. And so I think that also adds to um, the disconnect. So, but, but Michelle, I, I really, you know, applaud you as well. Um, you know, and I think we're just, we have to advocate for our children at all times. Um, and, and I have heard, it's so funny, I, I told you I'm PTA president and I remember I had a PTA meeting not long ago where a parent was complaining that she saw through the camera that other kids were eating during a time that was not <laughs> lunchtime, you know? And that, you know, was the te you know, can teachers enforce to make sure that there's no snack, which is, Impossible. I mean, can you imagine the put away that, you know, whatever, 
that cookie. <laughs> we will not teach anymore until that cookie is gone. Like, I just, I don't think that that can possibly happen, but, um, but thank you so much for sharing. I just want to add something before I'm going to jump out because I have, you know, other meetings. Uh, also, I just noticed that because of the parents that is so struggling financially to pay the rent, some of them that lost their job. So uh, one of the, my clients, uh, her daughter like started to cut herself and to harm herself because she can't, like, it's too much on her. And then she went to, you know, um, have suicide and I saved her life. She's 14 years old and her renal is just shut down and we went to the hospital, we saved her life. I just want to put that also, maybe you can hear the suicide or hurting the self on mutilations. That's maybe the kid's gonna do that because that, as I noticed with my nephews, he's starting to buy his tools and fingers. The other client, she started cutting himself and she's 14 years old by blade from her dad or brother's blade that she went to the bathroom and so just want to be, put that sent to you guys yeah as a mental definitely an, no, there's sorry. definitely an emotional impact to all of this that we have to keep at the forefront and see how we support because um and and listen if you're if you have a child that is struggling it's very important to notify um you know the counselor in the school and let them know um and let the teachers know and bring everyone on board to support the child because this is not the time to right. um, to to keep it quiet or let's all play pretend that everything is well i think this is a time where we as parents have to stand up and um you know really be honest Correct. give an honest picture so that we can actually get help for the child because at the end of the day it's about the child right. and their overall um success on an emotional level as well yeah i i just i have to add on that of course but as far as the cutting goes i would so personally this yeah. is going on in my own house yeah. and um it's an ocd behavior for for my daughter um, and it's brought on by the anxiety and the depression. Um, so uh, um, in addition to all of that, the mental health issue that I'm dealing with is that cutting and it's devastating to see. It's horrible to watch and it's horrible to see your kids struggle because they don't know why. She don't know why. She doesn't want to die. She just feels hopeless. And she said she doesn't care about anything because it's pointless. Mm -hmm. So I have mental health people in. Make them friends. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Someone was calling me. The board is not super helpful with that. But there are resources. There are St. Vincent's Hospital. They have partial programs. There's a lot of other resources, which I can give to Angela if anybody needs them, that have helped me a lot. Um, and, um, you know, sometimes they might need medication, you know, and you just got to do what you got to do to keep your kid just in a, in a, a place that they don't feel so so distressed that they want to resort to i just can't take this i'm sorry as you an know. educator i would not subject my kids to this i'm sorry my children will be definitely homeschooled number one number two parents have to come together and come or even parents and teachers come together and come towards whoever's putting this thing in place because so i'm quite sure this is not putting on 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 their children the higher up whoever got this this thing going into place is virtual learning. First of all, kids learn differently. Uh, not all kids are comfortable showing faces on, on, on laptops, including me, okay? So can you imagine for a child, they, they're learning differently and you got a teacher pointing them out on a laptop all about the way they can talk and no, kids learn differently. They have to learn how to teach kids in different learning styles. They have different learning styles. They have way that you have to rotate the learning styles. You're not supposed to have kids sitting in front of a laptop. You're talking about a little vibrant child and these, these sunlight. You know, so parents, y'all have to, and, 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 and even the teachers, 
if the teacher's saying they're feeling pressure, then y'all come together with something y'all can present to the people that's in charge because this is obviously is causing problems. If your kids got to go on medication just to go to school, that's an issue for me. I'm sorry. That's definitely an issue. And kids are biting on their toes and suicidal. This is a whole new, like the pandemic, it should be, a, it should be another recourse, another reasonable accommodations is what they give to people with kids with disabilities. If your child fit into that situation of reasonable accommodations, they have to come up with a policy and a plan for kids with reasonable accommodations. Until then, they will do, you send me your, send me my child's work. They're not going to sit in that class in front of that raggedy laptop or whatever it is that they're using to finish your work so you can get paid and my child is getting tortured and they ain't learning nothing anyway because they're not paying attention. And if they want to eat, maybe that's the only time they can eat during the day. Who are you? You in here trying to govern my house now? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Parents, y'all going to have to get your voices up, join together with the teachers, or y'all join together even... The ones that's on here, y'all can come together. And, and for your, your nephew said that's biting his, nose, his fingers and his toenails, that teacher would have got told off so terribly. I'm sorry to say that, but I would have told her off really bad. Because you're not supposed to. I remember when I was 10 and they was teaching this boy how to say three. To, the teacher was humiliating this little boy. He was in the West Indies. Tree. That's how they say three. Tree. And he would say, I don't see a tree. Say three. And the class is just laughing at this little boy. His name is Owen. I am 54. To this day, I remember that. You don't do that. And we, as parents and grandparents and caretakers, class action lawsuit, because they better get it together. I'm quite sure they would not do it. But if there was a kid that's bullying, and that's called harassing kids. That's called neglect. Okay. My man is off. I hate it. No, we appreciate your rant. So, I mean, the educator, I hate it. And no, I, I think that's why we're here. That's why we're here. We're here to be able to advocate, to bring all the voices forward, to see what the concerns are. And and because we want, we, we're saying right now, this right here, this right now is unacceptable. That's why we're here. We're saying this is unacceptable and this can't go on any longer. And we need to be able to elevate all of these different concerns and especially, you know, the mental health concerns. Um, you know, that's something that, and even if, and I want to, I want to mention just briefly um, that maybe a child is not necessarily cutting themselves or, um, you know, biting their fingers or anything, but maybe they're exhibiting anxiety in other different ways, or they're just feeling, or maybe their their sleep pattern has been like I know my daughter's sleep pattern. It took us a while for us to get it right, but her sleep pattern was completely off. Like she was waking up in the night when she didn't need to be. You know what I mean? And and then what do you think that that all of a sudden if someone has had a disrupted sleep sleep pattern that they're gonna wake up bright and bushy tailed for school in the morning? Of course not. Like that's a joke. So there's a lot to this. This is like, we're just taking the layers down. We're taking the layers down and taking the layers down, but this is a real deep issue. Is there anyone else who would like to share? I think there was Nia. Nia yeah. was jumping in. Nia? I would like to share. Um, I was just listening to everybody's stories about like mental health, especially. Um, and that's um, one of the reasons why I actually joined IRAs. Um, I actually struggle with a lot of mental health issues um, going into my senior year of college. So um, I was hospitalized for it um, and I ended up getting treatment. I was dealing with um, a lot of depression, um, anxiety, and then um, ultimately got di diagnosed with um, bipolar disorder. So I understand where like um, the kids are coming from um, in terms of not feeling motivated to go to school and do things like that. Um, and so I guess from my perspective, from a college student, um, where you have free range, and it seems as though a lot of, it seems as though a lot of, um, you know, the structure of schooling is, is mimicking, um, I'm not remote schooling. I don't know what this is. A lot of, um, the schooling that the kids are doing now is mimicking, um, you know, college education where, 
the kids have to do it on their own. They have to remind themselves of the workload. They have to um, get up and do it. They complain about the remote learning. Yeah. They're trying to get it to be a little better. And uh, if you don't, then, you know, the teachers would get on you. Um, so for me, it took a lot of effort of pushing myself past the the a mental disability to go and just finish school. Um, I kind of, I think I came back before I was ready, um, but that was me trying to show myself the motivation to go ahead and do it. Like you literally have to just push through the things. Um, and with the girl that I mentor now through iRaise, um, I can see a lot of myself in her where she um, is a junior now in high school. Um, she doesn't really have a lot of motivation. She stays up late. Um, but she sleeps all day. So I'm just trying to encourage her and inspire her. Like, you can you can do it. You just need to literally push yourself. Um, and I actually sat here today. We um, met today and we kind of built a schedule where she could, um, you know, get up at a certain time. I told her, I basically gave her like a college schedule. So like for me, you get up, you get ready for the day. Um, you know, you have your breakfast. Uh, and you look at your outline for your courses for the day. Um, she's old enough, obviously, to do that because she's in 11th grade. So she can, she's old enough to where she knows that she needs to push herself. Like you only have one more year before you graduate. If you want to go to college, you know, you're going to have to take this initiative in yourself to do that in school if you want to be serious about going to college because they're not going to baby you in college. You're, you're not going to get babied unless you look for the help they're not going to help you. Um, you know, everybody's on their own in school. So, um, and it's sad for the little kids. I know that obviously they're gonna need more guidance from their parents. Um, but for me, I think it's really about the structure and how you set up the day for them and finding motivation. Um, I feel like if they just got rewarded for something, because yeah, a lot of people are saying like, you don't know the why, like they don't know why they're going to school anymore. They don't know, like, it doesn't seem like there's a point to it. It's because they don't really know why they're doing it. Like if they had something to look forward to at the end of the day, I feel like that might be a motivation for them. Um, but right now they don't even have their classmates to interact with. They don't have no, you know, there is just like too much structure for them. So, um, that's also something that I'm working with with my ment uh, with my mentee is finding like a reward. Like what is something that makes you excited at the end of the day that you, you accomplished so much, um, you know, that you stayed on task throughout the day that you didn't, you know, take too many naps, but you, you know, you finished the day productively. That's what I've been working with her on. Um, but yeah, mental health is definitely a big contender in this whole remote learning thing especially if you're not used to it, but it is mimicking a lot of college etiquette. So um, on the bright side, they do have that to look forward to. If college is something that they look forward to in their future, um, it, it brings another perspective to learning. Um, in college, obviously we signed up for that and we wanted to get this degree. We wanted to get, we wanted to work towards something I think that's the only aspect that's missing in this remote learning is they don't have anything to look forward to. Um, so conversations about what they want to do when they grow up, I feel is never too early to have. If they, they if we watch a lot of TV, if we do a lot of social media, um, you know, you see a lot of things, but we don't have those conversations with kids about what they want to do when they grow up. It, it gives them sort of an idea of what to look forward to when they, you know, obviously go through the grades. Um, it gives them something to challenge themselves with. They can spend more time on social media or YouTube or whatever, looking at their favorite role model and what they do. Um, I just think things like that would help to motivate them a little more when they see somebody that inspires them. Um, I just wanted to share that little bit. Thank you for sharing. Thank you so much, Nia. Yeah, that was that was um, super amazing. Like, I just want to take a, a moment to say uh, thank you. Like, thank you for being you. Thank you for taking your experience and turning that into something so beautiful and pouring back into your peers and to kids that are younger than you. This is what we need and this is what tonight is about. And it's such a positive spin on this entire evening 
Um, and it really brings us into that next level, which is solutions and what can we do? So we've talked a lot about um, the things that we're struggling with as parents, um, that our students are struggling with. Now we really want to talk about some solutions. And I really wanted us to do breakout sessions. Uh, Leticia, are you able to um, open up breakout rooms on your end? Uh, if let we just see here. If we can do quick um, five minute breakout sessions on one solution that we would like to see happen with the public school, ed, uh, with the Department of Education and come back, that would be um, really amazing. I'm also, we're gonna share a lot of resources with you that we did not get to share. Um, it's going to be some tips from remote learning. We're also gonna get together a pile of mental health resources, um, as well as resources for parents with kids with special needs, just because we've seen this as a resounding theme tonight. So we will be sending that over to you as well. And then we'll also have a follow-up after this session for those parents that feel like they need that additional support system. So Leticia, um, have you, do you see the option on the bottom, the breakout room? I rooms? do. Uh, before we do, I see Jawan just wanted to add one more quick problem, he said, uh, in um, the chat. Yeah. Can, <laughs> do yeah. we have time for that? So we're really out of time, but if Jawan, if okay. you want to do it like quickly, 30 to 40 seconds. Sure, sure, sure. So I'm in IT and um, I, I understand COVID-19 popped up on everybody's radar randomly, um, but I don't think that COVID-19 is going to disappear anytime soon, even with the vaccines. Not everybody's going to be vaccinated. Not everybody's going to want to be vaccinated. Um, this is going to be here for a long time. So my statement is, is that I wish D DOE had one platform for all the applications. Like, I don't understand why there's Seesaw, why there's Dojo, why there's Google Classrooms. I mean, there's like so many different things. Like I have to memorize six different Zoom classrooms for each one of my children. So I wish they could just have it a little bit more organized in a way where it's just one centralized location. That's it. Excellent, I agree. I love that. And I want you to bring that to your group when we go into our breakout session. Um, Joan, jo that was amazing. So can we open it up, Leticia, just randomly assign and oh, those sure. three groups? We're gonna give everyone five minutes. I know it's not a lot of time, but to talk amongst in smaller groups, one thing, I want you to concentrate on one thing that you wanna see happen with the DOE. We're gonna bring these together, these solutions together, and we're gonna open up an online suggestion box for those that could not make it. So these are very serious, um, we're taking this very seriously. Um, and we are going to take this somewhere. So um, we're gonna put you in your breakout sessions. Um, um, whenever you can open it up, Leticia, it's all yours. And then we will close it. You'll see a one minute countdown um, once it's time to close for you to leave out and join the main session. The other thing to keep in mind is you're going to see the breakout room open. Once it opens, just join in on your assigned room, five minutes, and then we're gonna come right back to the main session to close, all right? Okay. And if one person okay. from each group can take down notes, that would be great. So if one person from each group could be the assigned note taker, that would be perfect. Okay, great. Okay. Thank all right, so you all can join your breakout rooms and we'll see you in five minutes. Thank you. 
Hey, Leticia. So I sent you over um, a, a Jambo board. I don't know if you've seen it in your email. It was sent to your, your AOL email. No, I did not see. Uh, let me. Yeah, take a moment and just look for it. Yeah, so what I would love for us to do is to open that up. And at the end, we're going to write out the solutions on a on that that jambo board which is essentially a virtual bulletin board okay, hold on one moment sure. i'm gonna also see if i can find the link and just put it in the chat box so just give me a second Alrighty. So I just put it in a chat box for you, Leticia. So if you want to try to open it up and um, when we all come back as they're saying they're, um, what they want to see, you can present the screen and you can actually type it in as they're, uh, as we're closing out. Hmm. And so was that with the iRaise email? Because it's saying I do not have access to. So you have to, you have to open up with your AOL email because I couldn't get it. Oh, okay. IRAs got email. it. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. I was like trying to put it to your iRaise email, but it was giving me a hard time. So I had to got put it. it to your AOL email. But okay. Try to open it up with that and you can screen share. Okay. Uh, that won't let me go back. Let me just try to go back into the email. <laughs> because okay. it will, yeah, now that I tried to do it with the eye rays, it's like it won't. Uh, it's one <laughs> doesn't want to cooperate. <laughs> yeah. Let me also see. I, I will see if I can. I'm not sure if it'll let me um, add your eye rays because it was giving me a hard time. It's really interesting. But let me see here. All right. Yep. Try it with your iRaise email. I just tried. I just added you under that. Okay. See if that works out. Okay. And you can also close the breakout rooms in one minute. So we can okay. all join back in the main session. Still not working under the eye rays for whatever reason. Um, uh, did you just it? send it recently? Yeah, I just uh, sent it. Maybe try to refresh it because sometimes it does that. And then try to open it. And then you can you close out breakout rooms right now too? It'll give them a one oh, minute sure. countdown. Yeah, so they'll be able to join in. It'll give them a okay. one minute countdown. Yeah. Can we uh, help you find
Are you seeing it, the option? Unfortunately, no. And I'm trying to accept it from the from the email that you sent and it's not allowing, still not allowing me to open it. It says I need to accept the invitation and it's not allowing me to accept the invitation. Uh, that's interesting. Okay, can you see my screen? But I, right. What was that? We're back. <laughs> Okay. We are back. Hi everyone. Um, can you all see my screen that I'm sharing or no? No. Um, no. Okay. No yeah. worries. Um, all righty. If I can have, let's see, one second. Let me just readjust here. All right. So um, I wasn't in the breakout sessions, but I'm sure we had some amazing um, discussions and we were excited to hear what some of those solutions are. Um, so can we have each person or one person from each group just do a quick one minute presentation on what their solution was that they came up with um, and presenting on behalf of their group? Anyone can start first. Um, I'll go. I was in the group with Mia and I forgot the other person's name. Sorry. Um, but we were kind of piggybacking on what the person from IT, Juwan, said about having one platform. And then Nia brought up this great idea on how maybe elementary should have their own- They're trying to get into. Oh, maybe elementary should have like their own platform and then middle school should have their own platform and then high school should have their own platform. Like, because each grade is learning differently. And that's was like one of the solutions we came up with. So to recap, you mentioned having separate platforms for each grade level. And when you say platform, can you just clarify what you mean by that? Um, I know, I'm not sure, cause I know some schools use Zoom and some schools use Google Meet and some schools use like other things like Jamboard, Kahoot. Like I feel like when it comes to learning um, and teaching different grades, I feel like there should be just like one cohesive thing. So maybe for example, if you're teaching elementary, they'll probably have like a platform that's like for elementary, like easier for kids to learn, like something with games and stuff like that. So it won't be so boring all the time, if you get what I'm trying to say. Absolutely. So um, different platforms to engage to different grade levels of children. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for sharing that. Nicole. Was that Nicole? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Nicole. All right. Who is next? I'll go next. Um, so we had Catherine, we had Lavender, we had Cassie, we had Anne, and we had Jawan. So we had great ideas. So less work, um, the assignments being given every day in every subject, especially when you add on with multiple kids, is a lot, you know, maybe giving more time or less work. Um, kids are straining themselves, their eyes, um, and, you know, every single day. And so extensive time on uh, devices just adds to that. Um, Lavender mentioned that we should see, we should um, see if moms can be given an incentive or some kind of compensation or see about getting one-on-one -on -one tutoring. Um, that's another thing. Um, and Cassie mentioned, uh, Fam, uh, having the importance of having a family liaison that she has in her child's school. And that person kind of bounces the um, concerns of between issue, the issues between teachers and students. And they keep checking in with the teachers and, and um, with the parents to see if there's any way they can help. Those are parent volunteers who fill those roles. And she feels like that's been successful. She feels that the parent survey that goes out monthly to find out what are the parents' needs, their concerns, and how the school is doing in meeting those needs, um, as well as providing free eBooks and parent classes for free as well has been really successful. And she thinks that that should be um, brought to all. Um, and Anne mentioned the importance of better communication from the school. Um, you know, dealing with the lack of engagement that occurs and working along with caregivers so that the caregivers can actually support um, the child as well. So I think all of those were really wonderful 
um, great ideas. And what I what I would like to do at the, uh, I guess when we send the follow up, Shaniqua, is also people mentioning the importance of having um, help with you know tutoring, right? And we both yourself and myself, we have free tutoring, you know, options that we can provide for parents, um, you know, with the homework helpers. And I know you also have a program so that we can get that those resources out to parents because it shouldn't be that you are feeling left behind. There are resources there to help you so that you can um, have one-on-one -on -one sessions for your child. Thank you so much, Angela. It sounds like your group was on fire. <laughs> I'm a little jealous I wasn't in that conversation. That's okay. Um, absolutely. You are, are on point, everything that you said. And um, I'm glad you took the notes because we'll, we'll put that all into our official memo that we send out. Um, and we do, Angela has a nonprofit that she runs. Um, for those of you that are a part of my nonprofit on here, we, I also run a nonprofit. Um, Catherine, if you can put the link and Angela, you can share your link um, mm -hmm. and to the the chat box for how to get that free tutoring. Um, Catherine is the program director of our community programs. So she runs, um, she spearheads a myriad, myriad of programs. So if you can also put a link in for parents or your email on how they can sign up for that free tutoring and Angela will share hers as well. Lavender, thank you so much. So um, Lavender, if you can, um, uh, if everyone actually, if you can do this, this would be great. There is a link in the chat box so if everyone can go to the chat box, there's a link there and you all were sent this link before the town hall, um, but there's an official link in that chat box. If you can open that up and, um, and you can go into the sticky note, which is the fourth option to the left as you're seeing it on the screen and you can start writing out what your ideas are. And Lavender, you can put um, some of the ideas from your group, you can start writing that and um, on that sticky note and everyone else that can open up that, that, um, that file and can, and can just uh, open it up and start writing out what your solutions are for reimagining our public school so we can have one full bulletin board, that would be great. All right, so Lavender, while you're putting that in, we're gonna hear from our last group um, who is going to share with us. I, I was that group two. That was group two. Oh, that was our group. So I, I took notes. I don't know if anyone else did. Did any it does everybody want me to just read what we talked about? Yeah, I we think were, you should go ahead, Michelle. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> we were talking like we started talking about um, you know, first we started talking about uh, the consistency. Uh, well, I think we actually ended up talking about consistency, like the whole conversation turned to the lack of consistency with regard to equity of resources um, between different school districts. So where one school might have tutoring available and extra resources for, available for students and different breakout resources, there are other schools that don't have that option. Um, homework, some kids are being given homework whereas other kids are not being given homework at all, you know? So the homework would be, for me, the homework would be anything my daughter didn't finish during her class time, you know? But for other parents, they're saying that their kids are getting actual homework to do. So why, why, the dis why is that so inconsistent? There should just not be homework. I was told by Tobias in District 8 when I brought up homework that there wasn't gonna be homework. So the only homework for my daughter is homework that she didn't finish during class time, you know? Um, and then maybe that they lower the expectations on parents because everybody's behind, you know, everybody in the entire, you know, probably across the US at this point is a little bit behind of what a normal expectation would be at the grade level their child's in. So why not push it back a little and, give everybody a break. The teachers would get a little bit of a break. The, they wouldn't be so stressed. And then the kids would get a little bit of a break, you know, and they would be able to actually absorb the information that they're getting. So um, I don't know if that's all, I, I think I caught everything. If anybody else remembers anything else we, we were talking about.
Yep, absolutely. So did any, anyone else from uh, Michelle's group, did any of you want it to chime in on that? And also Lavender, you can uh, screen, share your screen again and, and pull up that uh, bulletin. And for those of you that can uh, open up that link that I sent into the chat box and also um, participate um, by clicking on that link, opening it up and uh, putting in your own sticky, that would be great if you can. All right. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Lavender. So you can actually save that and it will become a sticky note on our parent town hall bulletin board. And those of you that, that are not able to open it right now, um, you can definitely uh, use it later. Uh, we will share it with you and you will have access to this. So we're going to keep our solutions up visually as well as putting in an official um, memo. The link is in the chat box. I sent it twice, Joanne. So if you look at the, uh, if you look at the, in the chat box, you'll see it there. Um, all right. So I'm gonna uh, as as we're getting these on, I see a lot of mental health resources for students and parents. Absolutely, parent surveys, um, a family liaison. Absolutely, uh, parents need a break. That was actually me. <laughs> um, great. So you can, this is our, this is just a visual bulletin board to again, get those solutions up there on that board so we can all see it. And you can participate by clicking on that link again, that's in our chat box. I also wanna say thank you so much. Uh, we are over time and you want you parents and educators have been absolutely wonderful. I also wanna take a moment and acknowledge, I believe George Torres, who's on with us from, from the Channel 12 News. Um, just want to say thank you, Mr. Torres. If you want a few words to um, say at this time, you're absolutely welcome to do. All right. So um, if there's no words from you, then again, thank you for joining um, us this evening and for listening to our the concerns of our parents. Um, I, again, you can continue with this this town, this parent, the town hall uh, jam board to continue placing those solutions up there. Um, I wanna give it over to Angela. She's gonna close this out um, and then we're going to send you out a link which is gonna be evaluation on how we did this evening. It's gonna help us with these future talks um, as well. We're gonna send out those resources as we promised you and you're all going to get a copy of that official memo that we'll be sending out to the DOE. So please look out for that in your inboxes um, because we'll make sure that you get a copy of that as well. Because this is a part of um, this collaborative session to be able to bring these ideas as parents to the forefront and make sure that they're heard. So Angela, I'm going to give it over to you and then um, you can have some final words and then I'll, I'll do the final closing. Sure. I just want to thank everyone for being here. Uh, this is really important. I think this um, really brought a lot of things to the surface um, of the concerns that we all have. And um, I just want to echo one thing that you walk away from. You guys are doing, each one of us is doing a great job. And um, the reason, the fact that there are issues doesn't mean that we are in any way failing. And the fact that we're having this conversation means that we're actually trying to find solutions and we want to bring this forward. So I, I hope this is the beginning of many more conversations to come. Um, I want us to be able to develop more resources and more support um, for us as parents and for our children. And I think having these conversations are just encouraging and pushes us forward. So um, please let's keep this conversation going and allow others to be part of it. This is where change begins. Change begins with, with all of this and having real openness, right? Because this has been about each one of you and each one of your stories. Your stories count, your stories matter and you matter, your child matters. So um, never stop advocating. Um, and if you ever have any concerns, definitely reach out to one of us. Um, we wanna be able to bring these concerns forward. So, and definitely do the evaluation. Thank you so much. I'll turn it over to Shaniqua and I appreciate all of you. 
Thank you, Angela. That was such a way, a great way to close. Just echoing again, Angela's sentiments. Thank you, parents, educators, all of you for being present, being here with us this evening. You could have been doing anything and we recognize that you are parents. I have to run out of these, this office and go grab my daughter <laughs> and make sure I get her in bed and ready for school in the morning. So parents, hang on there. Um, we are going to send some resources to you. We are support for you. We are a family. So if there's anything that you need, don't feel um, nervous or afraid to reach out to us. This is why we're here. Um, again, you've been amazing. You've been great. There will be some next steps coming out of this session and we will be following up with you. Please take a moment and take that link that's in the chat box for our evaluation and please take it to tell us how we did. We'll also be sending that to your emails, wishing you all a very safe, restful evening. Parents, continue the great work. Be encouraged, keep pushing, and continue being the great parents that you are. So again, thank you all so much for joining, and we're wishing you all a really great and safe evening.